Good afternoon, friends. I want to talk a little bit today about the first fruits. The 16th day of the first month, Abib Nisan, is April 1st, 4 1. Exodus 34 and 25 to 26, Leviticus 23 and 10 to 14 speaks of the barley harvest, the first fruits presented to the Lord. But it looks forward prophetically to the resurrection of Hamashiach. Little do the Jews understand that he has already resurrected. It will soon be time for those who are asleep in Christ to be resurrected and be a type of first fruits. So this day was the day of the first sheaf waving, the first fruit of the barley harvest. The antitype was Resurrection Sunday, which also occurs on 16 of Abib, Nisan, or April 1st. Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15:20, 2 Timothy 2 and 6 through 8. At his resurrection, Jesus also resurrected the saints whose tombs were open or marked at the moment of his death, and that was in Matthew 27. These saints were presented to the Father for his approval by Jesus in heaven, that's John 20 and 17. At the moment, the barley sheep was symbolically waved and lifted up at the temple at the time of the morning sacrifice of the lamb or the third hour. That would have been 9 a.m. in the morning. It's important to note that it was not a day of convocation. It's not a Sabbath to the Jews, so there is no reason for it to be a Sabbath in antitype post-resurrection to Christians. This is because the yearly festivals were not just commemorative in nature but also prophetic, pointing to future holy events as fulfillments. So the barley harvest in Jerusalem and the latter rains are March and April. Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. That's in Matthew 9 and 38 and Luke 10 and 2. He's the Lord of the harvest of the crop. A multitude of those to be taught how to obtain salvation of first fruits in the latter rain. Now, the Lord is going to be taking us home and he'll be harvesting us and at that time it's going to open the eyes of the latter rain crop of Israel, of Jerusalem, of the Jews for their own salvation in the latter rain. When they see that we are gone, the Lord is going to open up their eyes and that's the time when they're going to see Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is indeed who he said he was. <clears throat> and that is when they're going to be mourning because they're going to understand at that time. Romans 11.11, 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, speaking of Israel, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So when we are taken at the harvest, at the resurrection of the dead, at the rapture of those who are alive, the 1111 door at that time when we are harvested and taken, God is going to open up their eyes. Amen? And they will be mourning. Now the church has had 2,000 years of sowing and growing the crop of the harvest. And it's about harvest time. All who have died in Christ up to now represent first fruits or the early harvest. But Zechariah prophecies a final harvest. And that is the reason Jesus has not come yet for his bride. The Lord is waiting patiently for his final mighty harvest of the earth. Amen. 
James 5, 7 and 9 says, So, brothers, be patient until the Lord returns. Jesus is the farmer. He is the harvester. And see how the word farmers is Strong's 1092. It means husbandman, waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Isn't that interesting? Husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth. That is our Lord and Savior. His harvest of souls. He is patient over it. And you too be patient. Keep up your courage for the Lord's return is very near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers, so that you won't come under condemnation. Look, the judge is standing at the door. Revelation 4 and 1. We are the latter rain who will ripen the harvest, and then Israel will mourn. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come up against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son and shall be in bitterness for him, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. That's Zechariah 12 and 9. When we, the firstfruits of the barley, are taken, Israel will mourn, and she will finally understand, and her eyes will be open. Now Romans 8 and 23 states, And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the firstfruits of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 refer to Jesus as the first fruits of those who will be raised from the dead. He is the firstborn son of the Father. He is the resurrection. And he is the first of the promise that all who follow him will also be raised. He is a guarantee of our future blessing. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13 and James 1 and 18 call New Testament saints first fruits. They were the first to follow Christ and act as a promise that there will be more to come. In fact, James 1 and 18 infers that the Christians in the early church were the first fruits of all creation and the promise that creation itself will be restored. The final mention of first fruits in the Bible is in Revelation 14 and 4 and speaks of the 144,000 Jewish witnesses who will spread the gospel during the tribulation time. They will have a special role in heaven and are claimed by God and Jesus as special representatives of those who are saved. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13 says, But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord, because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for choosing us in Jesus' mighty name. James 1 and 18, he chose to give us birth through the word of the truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all created. Notice also the 18 here, 2018 parallel, perhaps. First fruits barley harvested on first Fruits, Nisan 16, April 1, Resurrection Sunday, 4 and 1, the open door. Now concerning first fruits, God is saying to Moses, I am taking my people into an exceptionally fertile land and I would like them to acknowledge that fact. Each spring, when the first harvest of the year is available, the people should bring some of their initial crops to the temple so that the high priest can acknowledge them before me. This must be done on Sunday, the morrow after the Sabbath, during the week of unleavened bread. Thus it happens so early in the Bible that God honors Resurrection Sunday, the Sunday after Passover, as representing particularly the things that come up out of the ground spontaneously and miraculously after the long, dead winter. Can you see this, friends, things that come up? Out of the ground after being dead, the dead in Christ rising. Jesus celebrated first fruits in the appropriate manner by rising from the dead on that day. Hallelujah. He also gave the Father his proper first fruits offerings. 
graves were opened and the dead people rose and were seen after his resurrection in Jerusalem. That's in Matthew 27. Our Lord, not unlike any farmer of the soil, gratefully brought before the Father a few early crops of what would be a magnificent harvest later on. We sometimes fail to note that Jesus was not the only deceased person to rise on that miraculous day of first fruits. Those he brought forth from their graves represent a type of the church. We too shall be brought forth from those first from their graves, and then us who remain alive will be caught up with them in the air very soon, brothers and sisters, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Will this be the day that we are also resurrected? So Ruth 1 and 22, we see the beginning of the barley harvest. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of the barley harvest. Ruth 3 and 2 says, And now is not Boaz of your kindred with whose maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Ruth 3 and 8. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. And he said, Who art thou? And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thy handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. The woman, the bride, Ruth, was under Boaz's feet, Christ like parallel just as believers are going to be under Jesus feet when he comes in the clouds for his bride Ruth marries her kinsman redeemer Boaz just as we the bride will be with our redeemer Jesus around the first fruits of the barley harvest at midnight we don't know what time midnight there is there's 20 some time zones in the in the world so we're not really sure the day or the hour, but we know about the time of the harvest. Amen. The feast of first fruits was commanded by God in the law of Moses found in Leviticus 23 and 9. This was the time in which the Jews were to come and offer the first sheaf of the barley harvest to the priest who would present the sheaves up to the Lord as an offering or a waving or a lifting up of the sheep to the Lord. When the first sheaf of grain was accepted by the Lord, it meant that the whole harvest was holy. That is Jesus. Amen. In the same way as Jesus rose from the dead, he was lifted up out of the grave. He became acceptable first fruits, making those of us who follow him in resurrection holy to the Lord. It assures us that just as he was raised to life, we too will be raised. First fruit symbolizes the consecration of the harvest to the Lord. Amen. This harvest is coming soon, friends. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted him to wash you clean? Have you accepted him as Lord of your life? Repent. Follow Jesus. Tell others the good news. He's about to return for those who love him and follow him. Amen. I love you all. I pray for you all that you are all being steadfast and enduring. And I pray for strength for you all in these very last days. Amen. God bless you all. I will see you soon in the air. Maranatha.